أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على السيد المرسلين البدر المنير البشير النذير محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and salutations upon the seal of the prophets and the last of the messengers. The radiating moon and the giver of glad tidings and the warner to humanity and the jinn kind. The one to whom all creation considers a lead lord and a master. The one who should be in the hearts of the believer, Hayyun fi qulubina, alive in our hearts. And the one whom, if it was not for him, we would not have known Badr, nor would we have known the month of Badr, Ramadan. So we thank Allah for sending the one who taught us how to thank Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the reason for us coming together on this afternoon, this afternoon in which we are on the shores of the night of Badr. This afternoon in which we are gazing at the events which occurred on the night of Badr, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it as a mark and a distinction between truth and falsehood. Between the armies of truth and the armies of falsehood. The armies of Allah and the armies of Shaitan. The armies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Jibreel and the armies of Iblis and the patrons of Iblis, Abu Jahl. And some may ask, why is it that Muslims have a connection and have a link and an attachment with the battles of their Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It is because in the battles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we find teachings of justice, mercy, compassion, kindness and love. That if it were not for the disbelievers placing a veil and a barrier between the da'wah to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there would not have been a battle of Badr. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow our tongues to speak the truth and allow our hearts to experience on this afternoon the battle of Badr. May Allah ta'ala allow us to be present amongst the people of Badr. Or some of the scholars say that when one visits the place of Badr with a attentive heart, one may hear the, straw, the sword striking in the battle of Badr to this day. For those with a heart that is awake and alive and listening. So fighters in history have not seen any justice, nor fairness, nor compassion, nor mercy in any battle or any war like the wars of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam fought some 27 battles, meaning he was a part of some 27 battles, and Badr was of these. And the Prophet wasallam had sent some 47 convoys, Saraya, where he sent Sahaba and he made a general from one of the Sahaba amongst them to lead them, however he didn't accompany them. But those battles which the Prophet wasallam accompanied himself and was present were 27. These were all after the Hijrah. He lived some 10 years in Medina. So an average of three battles a year, two or three battles a year. The Prophet Sallallahu after being cast out of Mecca and being given the permission to migrate to Medina, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't stay in Medina for long before he goes out to the frontiers. 
ensuring that the safety in Medina is present. And so Badr was one of these. So let us look at the history of Badr and what Badr is. Some say that Badr is the name of that place or village in which it occurred, the area in which the battle occurred. Others give the name to the well which was present in that particular area. And so they call the battle after the well, after the area, the location. But whatever the meaning, those with an attentive heart and an insight connected to the beloved will realize that all these names coincided with the one who was the better, who was the moon, the radiating, shining, full moon. Al-Badr al-Munir, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this battle of Badr was nothing without the Badr. And that's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with the Badr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had his stars surrounding him. Nujum. It's like you look in the evening. In this middle of the month of Ramadan, if you will look at the sky in the evening, you'll see the Badr. You'll see the full moon shining, radiating. And the stars surrounding him. And the stars were none other than the Sahaba, the Mahajirun and the Ansar, who left their homes for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave support to this moon, to this radiating and shining moon. So Ahl Badr, the people of Badr, the believers of Badr, who took part in the battle of Badr, became distinguished. They were distinguished amongst the inhabitants of the earth and distinguished amongst the inhabitants of the heavens. So those who took part in Badr from the human beings became the best of the human beings. And those who took part in the battle of Badr from the Malaika became the best of the Malaika. So Badr has an affair. Badr has a station with Allah wa ta'ala. And the sincere believer who has a concern for Badr and the people of Badr will also have an affair and a station with Allah. When Jibir salam asked Rasulullah what do you consider those who took part in the battle of Badr? How do you look upon them? And Sayyidi Rasulullah replied to Sayyidina Jibir salam, we consider them the best of the people of the, of the believers. And Sayyidina Jibir salam, says likewise we consider the angels who took part in the battle of Badr the best of the angels. So this is a distinction which Allah wa ta'ala has given the people of Badr, of the inhabitants of the earth and the inhabitants of the heaven, in which the heavens and the earth come together in order to fulfill the truth in the heavens and the earth. And so when a person sincerely seeks truth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfills his path of determination and sincerity, Allah ta'ala will aid him with the support and the help of the assistance of, assistance of the heavens. So in your life and your days and your nights that pass by in Ramadan and outside Ramadan, according to your sincerity and the support and victory which you give to Allah will be your position with Allah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this afternoon to make us of his Ansar, to make us of the Ansar of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who supported and assisted him, and to make us of the Muhajirun, those who migrated from Mecca to Medina, but above and beyond that, they migrated from the dunya to the akhirah. And they migrated from other than Allah and His Messenger to none other than Allah and His Messenger. So may Allah Ta'ala make us muhajirun from other than Allah and His Messenger to Allah and His Messenger. Make us muhajirun from other than akhirah to akhirah. Make us muhajirun from that which brings us to the hellfire to that which brings us to the jannah. <coughs> And you look at the people of Badr who went out to fight in Badr. Even non-Muslims, Mushriks, went out to fight in the battle of Badr. Of course, initially as we'll come across, they didn't go out to fight, but rather to stop a caravan and to raid it for various reasons. But two Mushriks, two polytheists, Kuffar, they came out with the Prophet in Medina on the way to Badr. And the Prophet ﷺ on the way, he takes notice of them. He says, who are you? He says, we're from such and such tribe, from Khazraj, from Medina. 
And then it was also Khazraj. He says to them, what, what, what do you intend? What's your purpose? They say, we want to go out and fight with you. And the Prophet وسلم, says, we don't accept except people of Iman to come with us. The Prophet وسلم, had guidelines. To give Nusra of the Haqq, we can't use anything except the Haqq. To give Nusra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't use anything except that which deserves and will seek the pleasure of Allah. To aid the truth, you can't use falsehood. To aid Iman, you can't use kufr. To aid Salah, you can't use Ma'asiyah. To get to Allah, you can't use other than Allah. This is the principle which Rasulullah is trying to implement within his Ummah. And he says to them, sorry, there's no place for you. You're shirk, there's no Iman. 